We're at some place along the highway, close to the village. <laughs> I used to harvest some wood out here from time to time. Can't remember the specific spot where I used to walk into these woods that are before you right now. And I certainly did not put up that sign there when I was working for a local organization. So we're going to wander on down. Oh. <laughs> Little caribou tracks along the road here. Right there. And one and a half boot lengths away. It's another track. <laughs> another boot length away or some more tracks. <laughs> so we live wherever we live on our little thing. Our little planet, our home world. We live wherever we live. <laughs> Life's not a anywhere else but here, we say. <laughs> it's preposterous to think that anything else exists, we say. There is no evidence anywhere that says <laughs> anything else exists or lives, we say. <laughs> well, how is it when humans settle and move places and settle and then move places again and settle and move places again? How is that any different than the grand perspective of what we say life? Out there. It's no different. We have some of our tales and stories and fables and legends <laughs> that say we used to live, we used to be. But nowadays we don't believe anything. Well, I'm not really dressed to go out and let you see what I want to show you. But you have to look real hard and real close. Probably can't see it because I'm not going to go out there right now. But I have been out there a few times. Someone moved in a, a few years ago out here. Someone thought that they would make their own little structure, make their own little place out there in the world away from everyone else away from everything else. Right there, center view, is a house. A little 20 by 20. Split level. <laughs> little condo. <laughs> house that somebody built up. And of course, this being native land, more or less, they said, or the other powers that be said, you have to move. It's not your place. You can't live out there. So those other people had to move. 
<laughs> Center screen, that little stump there with the white snow on it. Right behind it is another. Right behind it is the roof. And though we face obstacles in our way here and there, wherever we travel, wherever we move, <laughs> we still find some place to settle. <laughs> Only we live out here. Only we get to say <laughs> who lives. And we say that we are the only ones, people say. <laughs> You just have to look at some of these little settlements and structures here and there that we always see around us in the country. There is no evidence <laughs> that there's other people out there or other things that, oh, hmm. Well, we out here in space, who built this little highway here? <laughs> Why do civilizations in the past have certain highways they travel upon and, oh, someone on some planet way out there looks up and sees a, a star moving. Or if I'm somewhere on planet Earth, I look up and see something moving way out there. Or if I'm out in the countryside, and theoretically, if I never saw another human being and looked out and see something moving along the landscape, and, oh, what is that? I thought I was the only one that lived out here. <laughs> so how are those things any different? And what, what we see about the world out there, what is around us. How is that any different? So then we hear crazy things, but Oh, space missions, <laughs> bodies found on the moon, or whatever. <sighs> but that's not true. Those are just stories. <laughs> You're lying to us. <laughs> That snow is the roof, the snow on the roof that started to move and settle down. And it's still there. Gosh darn it, those darn trees would just move out of the way. Oh. Uh, I'm not talking about that snow there, that's, that's the ground. But right there. Our little instruments that we have peer way out there into the vastness of space and see things and detect things. And very few people believe that life exists out there. In fact, I don't even know the people that used to live out here on the, the highway when it was more of a 
little dirt road. <laughs> There's no evidence anywhere that anyone ever existed. It was just us. Oh. Oh. Hmm. What's this? <laughs> When we land on a rock somewhere, we see footprints, we see machinery, we see structures. Who made these? Eh. <laughs> we may even end up somewhere and then look around and, oh, well, there's a fully functioning ship there <laughs> with unknown inhabitants. <laughs> and they're watching. <laughs> And then we leave, we go home, we do whatever. <laughs> Little things are big things. And big things are small. So maybe if you were an inhabitant somewhere and you lived and then you explored the woods and come across this and if you had no idea and concept what it is you wouldn't know but you would wonder I was on a church mission one time and uh, was stationed someplace remote someplace far away. And rumor had it that some people that lived in one particular remote region of wherever I was sent to, they said, well, when I was a boy, or when so-and-so and I were younger, <laughs> We were out exploring in some of the more remote regions of our area and we came across a quarter mile or half mile or what have you of paved road. It was highway. It was smooth. And what the hell was that doing way out in the middle of nowhere? The pavement didn't look anything like the pavement that we can make modern day with our machinery. So those people looked and wondered and looked and stared in awe and then they left. Never went back, or so the stories say. So if you never lived somewhere and then moved into a new space and moved into a new place. Then you would look out somewhere and see things moving, see lights or see objects moving past. Maybe your scientific instruments in time would be able to pick up energy readings and gravity waves and fluctuation because when you see a boat move through the water you see the wake left behind the ripples well you can see the same thing and detect such things of travel and uh, objects moving they also distort space they also what you would call leave behind the trail of something. Could be even the small molecular or ions. Small, small things. Just like these tracks, these little markings that in time denote that, oh, there was a vehicle of some kind, or several vehicles that were here at one time. That's the little path that they leave. 
And if this place was left undisturbed for thousands of years or billions of years, perhaps covered over and then uncovered, the next group of people would probably, of course, if civilization fell and the other people that moved in, would have no concept of what these are. But to us today, we would say, oh, just a, that's just an access pull-out road. That's just tire tracks. <laughs> those green, those uh, orange things are uh, posted, uh, no trespassing signs. That over there, oh, that used to be a little local lake. The moose and caribou take water from there whenever they pass through. Sometimes some kids and adults come through in the summer and sit outside by the, by the lake. <laughs> But if you have someone else that comes after you and hears nothing about you and knows nothing about you, they, they would not believe. Or if some other group of people that did not know about your people and so on, they would wonder what the hell you were talking about. They wouldn't know what those markings were, what the trails were, what the signs were, what the structures were. We would only see whatever they allow them to see, themselves to see. Small things are big things, and big things are small. See, I don't even know where that little trail goes to. But as part of the old highway that used to go through the village here and the highway used to wander and wind and right along the foothills that we see up and down the highway or the current highway. From here to Anchorage it used to be 250 plus miles but now that they've uh, over the years and over the decades put in newer highways and uh, straighter sections of roads so you didn't have to do a turn and a dip up and down on the elevation and <laughs> every half mile every mile because every turn and every wind and every curve to your destination adds a few extra miles or so over time and as you pile up your distance and yet you have people still that live today their existence their bodies their language their culture their artwork their warfare their travel their day-to-day -day life tells you something spectacular about them it says that they used to travel from point A to point B either by themselves just thinking about their destination because you can't do something like that until unless you first already have the knowledge knowledge of just about everything and it is all within you within your head within your heart within your spirit and you know how to pray and meditate and align yourself correctly with the verse and with your creator. So these people, whether it was just one person or a group of people, their families, or hundreds or thousands of people at any given time, could literally think of some place that they wanted to be, whether it was Oh, on the other side of those trees, or on the other side of the foothill, or hundreds of miles away, or thousands of miles away, or how about what we call today uh, millions and billions of light years away. Because they already knew the terrain, they already knew the space, they already knew the pathways throughout space that were traveled by people that went before them
and they just had to believe they just had to have the desire and it was all inward it was emotion it was energy it was will and of course maybe a little trinket or an accoutrement upon their person something on their wrist like we see today in some of those old time bas-reliefs and other murals and statues and um, carvings and stuff of ancient people was what looks like today in our year 2017 well why are these people of old wearing a, a, a fucking wristwatch why does this person look like somebody in, in one of those black rapper videos of the 80s and 90s that has this four by five inch uh, circle or a star or some type of shape hexag hexagonal or whatever shape hanging from their neck what's the meaning of that <laughs> But for some peoples, especially mine, the Lakota, it was all within us, and the knowledge was passed down. And then as time moved on, and as you say, humanity collectively falls, and we are no longer as spiritual as we used to be, a creator has moved on elsewhere for a time, and we walk alone, and yet we have the duty and the mission to continue with life and to continue with humanity and to raise up the younger generations to be the best that they can be and so on and so on then you get some of the little trinkets that you would put on your wrist that you would adorn around your neck or on your breastplate or on your head if you wore a helmet piece or wore a headdress or wore something you kept your uh, you kept the sacred instructions and you kept the vital information alive in the language and you kept such things alive in your songs and in your stories and legends every culture and every color anciently has such knowledge most of us alive today that still embrace and still are with their culture are coming to knowledge of these ancient things first for themselves and later on for the rest of us that are still asleep like I said questions you may have about things it's right in front of you you just have to look just look at this little scene for three seconds and tell me what you see think about it tell me what you see look at this object here just for a few seconds listen to the noise that it makes tell me what you see Look at our little sign over there, posted up, and tell me what you see. Well, you don't have to tell me, but tell yourself what you see. Why are these three things here? Why were these three things that I just showed you to look at and think about for a few seconds each? Why are they here? Who put them there? What was the mindset behind the people that put these things here and that made them? And what's the current mindset and uh, what's the type of people that might use these objects or these pathways or this, these vehicles? So when you look up in the night sky like I do a lot, just like I'm kind of looking out there right now and we are 
both seeing something pass by us and fade away into the distance. I also see objects and see light, see stars, I see objects near and far. And I don't have to take pictures and videos of everything. Some of those things I already know about. It was built into the, my body, it was built into my brain, into my, and saturated in the tissues of my body, and uh, was programmed into the bones, into the bone making centers and the blood making bones of my body. It permeates me, flows through me, is in me. And such things are also in you. You just have to awaken to such knowledge for yourself. Anyway. I've got to go look for some caribou that a friend of mine told me that was run over or shot or uh, struck by a vehicle somewhere. Further down the road and then the... I'm going to uh, make some more film and then go back home. It is cold out here. My hand is numb. Thank you for your time.